Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 43 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the F distribution and also we discussed the role of the F distribution in interval estimation and hypothesis testing. Interval estimation and hypothesis testing that we discussed last time was in order to compare the population variances of two normal populations. Isse pehle aapko yaad hoga students ke humne t test ke zariye bhi aur z statistic ke zariye bhi do population means ko aap isme compare kiya tha. But you will agree that there may be many situations where we may be interested in testing the equality of more than two population means. Agar aisi situation mein hum t test lagana chahe, then we will have to do that so many times. For example, suppose that we are interested in, in uh, comparing the means of the populations of heights of the adult males of three different countries. Aap agree karenge ke chunke heights ki baat ho rahi hai to is liye normal populations hai. To ag agar hum chahe to hum t test ke zariye ye kar sakte hai. But students, if the populations are A, B and C, how many times will I have to apply the t test? First, I will compare mu A with mu B. Then, I will compare mu A with mu C. And lastly, I will have to compare mu B by, uh, by mu C. Lekin, agar teen ki bajai char populations ho, then the number of tests that I have to run becomes uh, much larger. Only four populations and I have to do the test six times. A, B, A, C, A, D, B, C, B, D and C, D. Isi tarah se, agar aap populations ki tadad thoda sa bhi badhayenge, to aap dekhenge ke jo number of T tests aapko run karne padhenge na, unki tadad zyada tezi se badhti chali jati hai. And obviously, that becomes uh, quite cumbersome. So, we need a technique by which we are able to compare the means of 3, 4, 5 or even more populations at the same time. And you will be interested to know that the great statistician Sir R. A. Fisher back in 1923 introduced this concept which is called analysis of variance and which enables us to test the equality of several population means. As you now see on the slide, Analysis of variance, abbreviated as ANOVA, is a procedure which enables us to test the hypothesis of the equality of several population means. That is, we are able to test the null hypothesis, mu1 is equal to mu2, is equal to mu3, is equal to so on up to mu k against the alternative that not all the means are equal. Students, aap ne note kiya hoga ke alternative hypothesis ko is tarah se state kiya gaya that not all the means are equal. Yani, hum ye nahi kaha ke mu1 is unequal to mu2, is unequal to mu3, is unequal to mu4 and so on. Yani, hum ye nahi keh rahe ke zaruri hai bho ke sab ki sab means aap is mein unequal ho. Hum ye keh rahe hain ke jo null hai, that is saying that all of them are equal. Aur uska jo alternative hai, wo ye hai ke not all of them are equal. Suppose there are seven of them. Ho sakta hai ke unme se chhe barabar ho, sirf ek mukhtalif ho. Agar ek bhi mukhtalif ho gai, to then the null hypothesis is violated. So, uh, we can say it in this way that not all the means are equal or we can even say at least two of the k population means are unequal. All right. The next point is that analysis of variance has it, its application in uh, regression and also in experimental design. Jo baat uh, main aapke saamne present kar rahi hoon, that is the utilization of the technique of analysis of variance 
इन एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिज़ाइन तो पहला सवाल ये है कि वॉट एग्जैक्टली डू वी मीन बाई एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिज़ाइन एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन बाय एन एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिज़ाइन वी मीन अ प्लान यूज टू कलेक्ट द डेटा रेलिवेंट टू द प्रॉब्लम अंडर स्टडी इन सच अ वे एज टू प्रोवाइड अ बेसिस फॉर वैलिड एंड ऑब्जेक्टिव इन्फ्रेंस अबाउट द स्टेटेड प्रॉब्लम द प्लान यूजली इंक्लूड्स द सिलेक्शन ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट्स हुज इफेक्ट्स आर टू बी स्टडीड द स्पेसिफिकेशन ऑफ द एक्सपेरिमेंटल ले आउट एंड द असाइनमेंट ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट्स टू द एक्सपेरिमेंटल यूनिट्स ऑल दीज स्टेप्स आर अकम्पलिश बिफोर एनी एक्सपेरिमेंट इज एक्चुअली परफॉर्म्ड स्टूडेंट्स शायद आप समझ रहे हों कि ये तो कुछ बहुत ही कॉम्प्लिकेटेड बातें शुरू हो गई यू विल इन शाह अंडरस्टैंड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट एज वी डिस्कस इट थ्रू द एग्जाम्पल दैट आई विल बी प्रजेंटिंग इन अ शॉर्ट वाइल लेकिन उससे पहले ये जो दो तीन टर्म्स इस्तेमाल हुई उनकी बात करते हैं देखिए सारी बात का जो जिस्ट है ना वो ये है कि हम अपने एक्सपेरिमेंट को इस तरह से डिज़ाइन करना चाहते हैं कि हमारे जो रिजल्ट्स हों वो वैलिड हों रिलायबल हों प्रॉपर हों और उसके लिए अगर हम अप्रोप्रिएटली डिज़ाइन कर लें अपने एक्सपेरिमेंट को तो जाहिर है कि दैट विल बी वेरी गुड एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिज़ाइन इज़ अ वेरी वास्ट एरिया वॉट आई विल बी डूइंग इज़ अ वेरी बेसिक इंट्रोडक्शन टू दिस कॉन्सेप्ट देर आर टू टाइप्स ऑफ डिज़ाइंस द सिस्टमेटिक डिज़ाइंस एंड द रैंडमाइज डिज़ाइंस बट द एनालिसिस ऑफ वेरियंस टेक्निक दैट आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग दैट इज़ एप्लीकेबल ओनली टू द रैंडमाइज डिज़ाइंस स्टूडेंट्स द बेसिक रैंडमाइज डिज़ाइंस आर द कम्प्लीटली रैंडमाइज एंड द रैंडमाइज कम्प्लीट ब्लॉक डिज़ाइंस एंड आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग दीज वन बाई वन As you now see on the slide, the completely randomized or CR design, it is the simplest type of the basic designs, and it may be defined as a design in which the treatments are assigned to the experimental units completely at random. That is, the randomization is done without any restrictions. this design is applicable in those situations where the entire experimental material is homogeneous that is all the experimental units can be regarded as being similar to each other let me illustrate this concept with the help of an example an experiment was conducted to compare the yields of three varieties of potato each variety was assigned at random to equal size plots four times the yields came out as follows for variety a the yields were 23 26 20 and 17 for variety b 18 28 17 and 21 and for variety c 16 25 12 and 14 test the hypothesis that the three varieties of potato are not different in their yielding capabilities students aaiye is interesting problem ko understand karne ki koshish karte hain dekhiye this is an example of the completely randomized design hamare paas situation kya hai सिचुएशन ये है कि तीन मुख्तलिफ वाइटीज हैं आलू की एंड वी आर वॉन्टिंग टू कम्पेयर के ऑन द एवरेज किस वाइटी की पैदावार ज़्यादा होती है या बराबर है सबकी पैदावार अब इस बात को हम किस तरह से मालूम करेंगे जाहिर है कि हम उन वाइटीज को बोएंगे और जब पैदावार हासिल होगी देन वी विल बी एबल टू कम्पेयर बट स्टूडेंट्स um we should not be allocating this uh, variety 1 to one farm and variety 2 to the second one and variety 3 to the third one uh hame chahiye ki hum replication kare yani 
इस प्रोसेस को रिपीट करें जैसे कि आपने इस एग्जाम्पल में देखा कि वैरायटी वन को भी चार दफ़ा चार मुख्तलिफ फार्म्स में बोया गया वैरायटी टू के लिए भी ऐसे ही किया गया चार मरतबा बोया और थ्री के लिए भी इसे कहते हैं द रेपिटिशन ऑफ द बेसिक एक्सपेरिमेंट या रेप्लिकेशन और इसका पर्पज़ क्या है आपने देखा कि वैरायटी वन को जब चार दफ़ा हमने चार मुख्तलिफ फार्म्स में उगाया तो जो पैदावार हुई दैट वॉज नॉट आइडेंटिकल एज यू वंस अगेन सी ऑन द स्क्रीन फॉर वैरायटी ए द यील्ड इन द फर्स्ट फार्म वॉज ट्वेंटी थ्री बट द यील्ड इन द सेकेंड वॉज ट्वेंटी सिक्स द वन फॉर द थर्ड वॉज ट्वेंटी एंड फॉर द फोर्थ इट वॉज ओनली सेवनटीन सो दिस इज द पॉइंट कि अगर आप वही वैरायटी भी बार बार बोएंगे ना और सिमिलर लैंड में बोएंगे यू मे नॉट गेट द सेम रिजल्ट दिस इज़ अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट इन एक्सपेरिमेंटल डिज़ाइन ऑल राइट स्टूडेंट्स मैंने जैसे पहले कहा दिस इज़ एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ द कम्प्लीटली रैंडमाइज डिज़ाइन इसमें हम ये एस्यूम कर रहे हैं कि वो जो बारह फार्म्स हैं जिनमें से चार में हमने वैरायटी ए को बोया चार में वैरायटी बी को और चार में वैरायटी सी को ऑल ट्वेल्व ऑफ देम आर होमोजीनियस एक जैसी ज़मीन है फर्टिलिटी एक जैसी है रेनफॉल वेदर कंडीशंस हर लिहाज से वो एक जैसा एक जैसी ज़मीन है और इसमें हम टोटली एट रैंडम ये जो तीन वैरायटीज़ हैं चार चार मरतबा बो रहे हैं यही बेसिक लेआउट होता है ऑफ अ कम्प्लीटली रैंडमाइज डिज़ाइन इसमें ऑफकोर्स हमारी ये भी असम्पन होगी कि वो जो बारह फार्म्स हैं दे आर ऑफ इक्वल साइज ये समझ लें कि वो एक बड़ी बड़ा जो ख़त ज़मीन है उसको आपने बारह बराबर हिस्सों में काटा और हर हर हिस्से में एक एक दफ़ा वैरायटी वन ए बी सी का ही है या वन टू थ्री का ही है उनमें से कोई एक आपने बोई इस तरह से कि चार मरतबा पहली चार मरतबा दूसरी और चार मरतबा तीसरी आई लेकिन रिपीटिंग माई सेल्फ कि वो रैंडमली आपने उसके अंदर लगाई हैं एंड यू कैन एक्चुअली यूज द रैंडम नंबर टेबल टू डिसाइड कि जो पहला फार्म है उसमें कौन सी लगेगी दूसरे में कौन सी और इसी तरह यू कैन गो नाउ दैट वी हैव डिस्कस द पॉइंट दैट दिस इज अ सी आर डिज़ाइन ऑफ कोर्स द नेक्स्ट स्टेप इज हाउ डू वी प्रोसीड विद टेस्टिंग वॉट वी आर वॉन्टिंग टू टेस्ट स्टूडेंट्स द बेसिक फॉर्मेट ऑफ द हिपोथिस टेस्टिंग प्रोसीजर इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम एज बिफोर आपके वही छः स्टेप्स होंगे द फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ द हिपोथिस द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस द टेस्ट स्टेटिस्टिक द कॉम्पिटेशन ऑफ द टेस्ट स्टेटिस्टिक द क्रिटिकल वैल्यू एंड द कंक्लूजन सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द नल हिपोथिस इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम इज म्यू ए इज इक्वल टू म्यू बी इज इक्वल टू म्यू सी दैट इज द मीन यील्स ऑफ वराइटी ए बी एंड सी आर द सेम बट दी ऑल्टरनेटिव हिपोथिस इज दैट नॉट ऑल द थ्री मीन्स आर इक्वल मे बी ऑल ऑफ दम आर अन इक्वल और एट लीस्ट टू ऑफ दम आर अन इक्वल द लेवल ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंस इज फाइव परसेंट एंड द टेस्ट स्टेटिस्टिक इज एफ इज इक्वल टू द मीन स्क्वेयर फॉर ट्रीटमेंट्स डिवाइडेड बाई द मीन स्क्वेयर फॉर एरर एंड इट कैन बी मैथमेटिकली प्रूव दैट इफ एच नॉट इज ट्रू देन दिस स्टेटिस्टिक फॉलोज एन एफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन विद थ्री माइनस वन एंड ट्वेल्व माइनस थ्री दैट इज टू and 9 degrees of freedom students maine kaha ki ye jo statistic hai it follows the f distribution with 3 minus 1 comma 12 minus 3 degrees of freedom ab ye 3 minus 1 kya hai you see we have three varieties of potato technically speaking we have three treatments to ye 3 minus 1 jo hai it is representing the number of treatments माइनस वन एंड दिस ऑफकोर्स इज न्यू वन जो हमारी 
pair of degrees of freedom hota hai usme jo pehli wali hoti and what about new 2 jaise maine kaha 12 minus 3 aur 12 minus 3 kya matlab hua dekhiye humne 4 4 aur 4 dafa varieties a b aur c ko boya so the total number of farms that we involved that was 12 and uh, minus hum kya kar rahe hain 12 mein se 3 that is the number of varieties अब इस तरह से तो बड़ा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड लग रहा है अगर आप उसको एल्जेब्रिकली एक्सप्रेस करें देन इट बिकम्स वेरी सिंपल इफ के रिप्रेजेंट्स द नंबर ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट्स यानी द नंबर ऑफ वैरायटीज देन न्यू वन इज इक्वल टू के माइनस 1 एंड इफ एन रिप्रेजेंट्स द टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशंस व्हिच इज 12 इन दिस केस देन न्यू 2 इज इक्वल टू एन माइनस के 12 माइनस 3 ऑलराइट स्टूडेंट्स what is the fourth step in any hypothesis testing procedure? Of course, it is the calculation of our statistic. Ab yaha pe ek khasi detailed discussion ka aagaz hota hai. Kyunke is particular procedure mein ye jo f statistic hai, isse compute karne ke liye aapko pehle bohat saare, kafi saare steps accomplish karne hote hai. And you have to construct what is called the ANOVA table. The table that you now see on the screen is the ANOVA table in the case of the completely randomized design. Students, as you can see, this table consists of five columns headed source of variation, degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean square and F. Let me discuss these with you one by one. In the first column, source of variation, you can see that we have under that three sources of variation. The variation between treatments, the variation within treatments, which is also denoted by error. And in the last row of the table, you see the word total, which stands for the overall variation in our data set. If you have a look at the data values once again, yani jab humne un teen varieties ko boya tha aur baad mein jo paidawar hume hasil hui thi, data values jo hain, wo to wo yield ki mukhtalif values hi hain na, jo hume hasil hui thi. You can see that they are different. We have 23, 26, 20, 17, 18, 28 and so on. Agar in bara values ko hum ikatthe consider kare, to saaf zahir hai that they are not all the same and there is an overall variation in these values. Ye to hui overall variation and this is being represented in the last row of the ANOVA table. Students, the other two sources of variation that we have identified are the variation between varieties and the variation within varieties. If you have a look at the data values once again, as you now see on the screen, the values for variety A are 23, 26, 20 and 17. B ke liye 18, 28, 17 and 21 or C ke liye 16, 25, 12 and 14. Agar aap column by column inhe compare kare, to shayad aap mujh se agree kare ke agar che A or B mein to bhoat zyada fark mehsoos nahi ho raha, lekin variety C jo hai, us ki do values 12 or 14 um, kaafi kam lag rahi hai compared with the values for variety A or B. So, the point to understand is that there is a possibility that there is a variation between the three varieties. Agar hum variety A ki paidawar jo, hum, jo hume data values mili hai, if we find the mean of those and the mean of the values for variety B and the mean of the values for, for variety C, then it is possible that x bar A and x bar B and x bar C may be quite different from each other or at least 
one of them may be different from the other two. So, this is what we mean by variation between treatments. The other one is the variation within treatments. Agar aap sirf variety A pe gaur kare, to aap dekhe ke uske andar the values are not the same. Or jaise mene pehle bhi kaha tha ke values mukhtalif hain, to goya hum ye keh rahe hain ke ek hi variety ya hum ne boi hai aur uske baawajood mukhtalif um, values hume mil rahi hain. So, the variability in the yields of variety A can be called the variation within variety A. Similarly, the variability in the yields of variety B can be called variation within variety B. Also, the variability in the yields of variety C can be called variation within variety C. <coughs> now, we can say that the term variation within treatments stands for the combined effect of the above mentioned three variations. Students, aapne dekha tha ke humne variation within treatments ke liye error ka loves bhi istamal kiya. And it is a very very important term and widely used. Ab ye sochte hain ke error kyun keh rahe hain. Dekhye, baat is tarah se aap understand kare ke hum keh sakte hain ke bhai agar humne ek hi variety uh, boi hai aur wo jo farms hain unke sizes bhi barabar hain bilkul homogeneous wo hain fertility rainfall sunshine weather har lihaz se wo charon farms ek jaise hain agar then if we are sowing the same variety in the four farms we should get exactly the same yield from all the farms theoretically shayad hum ye keh sake but we find that in spite of all this control um, the yields are different so, this means that there is some kind of an error that uh, is from what it should have been. Some identical value that we should have had for all the farms. Alright, having discussed the first column of the ANOVA table, students, let us now concentrate on the second, third and fourth columns. As you now see on the screen, the second, third and fourth columns of the ANOVA table are entitled degrees of freedom, sum of squares and mean square. The point to be understood is that the variations, the various sources of variation that we have been discussing, these are measured by computing what is called mean square and as you now see on the slide, mean square can be defined as sum of squares divided by degrees of freedom. The variation between treatments will be measured by computing mean square treatment which is given by the sum of squares for treatment over the degrees of freedom for treatments and the mean square error is given by the sum of squares for error divided by the degrees of freedom for error. Now, it can be mathematically proved students that in analysis of variance pertaining to the completely randomized design, the degrees of freedom for treatments are k minus 1, yani number of treatments minus 1, jaise mene pehle bhi indicate kiya tha, and the degrees of freedom for error are n minus k, the total number of observations minus the number of treatments. Therefore, as you now see on the slide, m s treatment is equal to s s treatment over k minus 1 and the mean square for error is equal to the sum of squares for error divided by n minus k. Now, the question is, how do we compute the various sums of squares? As you now see on the slide, the total sum of squares denoted by TSS is equal to sigma sigma xij square minus CF, where CF stands for correction factor. Also, 
the sum of squares for treatment denoted by SST is equal to summation over J of T dot J square, this whole expression divided by R minus the correction factor and R in this formula denotes the number of data values per column that is the number of rows in this particular problem. Also the sum of squares for error denoted by SSE is equal to the total sum of squares minus the sum of squares for treatments. Students, zahir hai ke pehli nazar mein to ye kafi complicated maamla maalum ho raha hai but when we go through all the steps step by step inshallah you will find that it is not at all as difficult as it appears to be at this time. Um, ye sari jo terms hain we will be explaining them step by step. Is waqt aap sirf is baat ko note karein ke jo example hum kar rahe hain aur jo formulae hum present kar rahe hain they are pertaining to that particular case when every variety or every treatment generally speaking is being allocated to the experimental material equal number of times. Yani jaise ke is example mein dekha ke variety 1 ko bhi 4 dafa boya gaya, variety 2 ko bhi 4 hi dafa aur 3 ko bhi 4 hi dafa. Otherwise you can also have situations in the completely randomized design where the various treatments are not being allocated equal number of times. Yani aisa bhi mumkin tha ke aap variety 1 ko 5 dafa bo dete, variety 2 ko 3 dafa aur variety 3 ko 4 dafa. Baharhal to keep things simple in the first instance we are discussing that situation where all of the varieties are being uh, sown equal number of times and the formula that you just saw all these formulae um, they pertain to this particular situation. All right, aapne note kiya ke pehle do jo the the sum of squares for treatment or the sum of squares for total wo to zara complicated si cheeze lag rahi thi lekin jo tisra hai the sum of squares for error that is found very easily and it is simply the total sum of squares minus the sum of squares for treatment. Iski vajah ye hai that it has been and can be mathematically proved and derived that very interestingly the total sum of squares can be partitioned into these two separate and distinct uh, parts the sum of squares for treatments and the sum of squares for error. So that SST plus SSE comes out to be equal to the total sum of squares and therefore SSE is equal to total sum of squares minus the sum of squares for treatments. A very similar situation exists for the degrees of freedom. As you now see on the screen, it can be mathematically proved that the degrees of freedom for total can be partitioned into two distinct parts the degrees of freedom for treatments and the degrees of freedom for error. So that our equation becomes the total degrees of freedom are equal to degrees of freedom for treatment plus the degrees of freedom for error. An equation very very similar to the one that we had for the sums of squares. Now it can be shown that the degrees of freedom pertaining to total are n minus 1. So as you can see n minus 1 is equal to k minus 1 plus n minus k. Saab zahir hai k right side pe k jo hai wo minus k ke saath cancel ho jata hai. And so the equation is correct and as I said just a short while ago this equation that we now have is equivalent to the equation total degrees of freedom are equal to the degrees of freedom for treatment plus the degrees of freedom for error. Students, kafi lambi discussion ho gai about the various formulae and the various uh, equations that we have. Let us now apply all of these to our example 
وہ جو ہم نے آلو بوئے تھے اور جن کی پیداوار بھی ہمیں حاصل ہو چکی ہے میرا خیال ہے کہ اب تو ہمارا دل چاہ رہا ہے کہ ہم ان کو کھا ہی لیں بٹ آئی تھنک بفور وی ڈو دیٹ لیٹ اس اینالائز دا ڈیٹا دیٹ وی ہیڈ ایز یو ناؤ سی آن دا سلائڈ وی ہیڈ تھری ورائٹیز اے بی اینڈ سی اینڈ دا ہیلس آف دا تھری ورائٹیز آر and 16, 25, 12, and 14. If you look at the quantities that you have in brackets next to these data values, students, the quantities in the brackets are simply the squares of all these data values. The square of 23 is 529, the square of 26 is 676, and so on. Now, if you concentrate on the row underneath the data values, it is entitled t.j. The first value in this row is 86, which can be called t.1. The second one, 84, can be called t.2. And the third one, 67, can be called t.3. t.j se murad hai, the total of the jth column. So, the total of the first column, 86, t.1, the total of the second, t.2, and generally speaking, t.j. Students, ye jo ij ki baate hai, ye to bohat zyada important hai, and it is very necessary that you don't get confused here. Aapko pehle hi maalum hoga, from pure mathematics, that if you have a bivariate table, generally, i stands for the rows, and j stands for the columns. یعنی فرسٹ رو سیکنڈ رو آئی ایتھ رو اسی طرح فرسٹ کالم سیکنڈ کالم جے ایتھ کالم اینڈ سو آن اب یہ جو میں نے ابھی آپ کے سامنے پرزینٹ کیا ٹی ڈاٹ جے جے تو ہوپ فلی آپ سمجھ گئے کہ فرسٹ کالم کا ٹوٹل ٹی ڈاٹ ون اور جے ایتھ کالم کا ٹوٹل جنرلی سپیکنگ ٹی ڈاٹ جے ایک کوشچن آپ کے ذہن میں آیا ہوگا کہ یہ ڈاٹ کیا چیز ہے اٹ از این انٹرسٹنگ نوٹیشن آپ دیکھیے کہ اگر ہم کسی ایک ویلیو کی بات کرتے ان دیٹ ٹیبل وی ووڈ ہیو سیڈ ایکس آئی جے یعنی ایکس آئی جے ووڈ ہیو بین دا ویلیو ان دی آئی ایتھ رو اینڈ دا جے ایتھ کالم لیکن اب اس وقت ہم نے آئی کی جگہ پہ ڈاٹ ڈالا ہے ٹی ڈاٹ جے اور ڈاٹ اسٹوڈنٹس اس کو ریپرزینٹ کر رہا ہے کہ ہم جو سم لے رہے ہیں نا دیٹ از اوور آئی ایز یو ناؤ سی آن دا اسکرین If you concentrate on the first column, 23 plus 26 plus 20 plus 17 is equal to 86. Ye jo sum ho raha hai, students, it is over the four rows that you have. Yani, aap ye na keh samjhein that it is the sum over the first column. First column ki values ko sum kiya ja raha hai over the rows. The value of the first row 23 plus the value in the second row 26 plus the value in the third row 20 plus the value in the fourth row 17. So T.186 stands for the total of the values in the first column or dot jo hai wo denote kar raha hai ke rows ke upar humne sum kar diya. Now, let us concentrate on the row that we have underneath t.j. And this one is called t.j square. And it is simply the squares of the values that you have in the, in the row above. That is, 86 square is equal to 7396. 84 square is 7056. And 67 square gives you 4489. Students, if you look at the value to the right of 67, we have 237. And if you look at the value under that, that is 18941. Ye kaun si values hain? These are the sums of t dot j and t dot j square respectively. That is summation t dot j. summation being taken over j 
that is summation being taken over the columns that is equal to 237. Also sigma j t dot j square is equal to 18941. Now we have covered computation table ko takriban mukammal cover kar liya hai. The only two items that are left are the values that we have in the last column and the last row of this table. If you have a look at the last column first, you find the expression sigma j x i j square on the top of that column. And students, if you add the numbers which are inside the brackets in the first row, that is 529 plus 324 plus 256, you obtain 1109, the first entry of the last column. Ab zara dobara se is notation pe gaur ki jay, sigma j x i j square. Aap ko yaad hai na, ke brackets ke andar, hum ne x i j, humari jo values thi, x i j, unke squares likhe hue hain, aur ab hum in ko sum kar rahe hain, row by row, but the summation is happening over the columns. The first sum is 1109, the second one is 2085, the third one 833 and the fourth one 926. And students, if you look at the bottom row of this table, you have sigma i x i j square. Is vakt hum unhi quantities ko jo brackets ke andar hain, sum kar rahe hain. But of course, now we are coming downward and we are summing over the rows. That is, summation is happening over i. Because as you remember, i stands for the rows. First row, second row, i th row and so on. Doing that, the first sum of the squares of the data values comes out to be 1894, the one in the uh, bottom of the first column. Similarly, the second one is 1838 and the third one 1221. When we add all three of these, the total is 4953, exactly the same as what we obtained when we added sigma j x i j square, all the four values that occurred in the last column of our table. Ye to khair obvious hi hai na, ke aap values ko pehle is side se sum karke uske baad niche ko chale jaye, ya pehle aap niche ko chale jaye aur uske baad is taraf a jaye, it is obvious that the final sum is going to be the same. Now students, ye jo final sum aya hai na, this is the one for which we have the notation double summation x i j square. Q is liye ke we are adding over i and over j or is ke opposite kahe to hum kahenge that first we, we add over j and then over i. This order may be chale jaye, it is a case of double summation. So, as you once again see on the screen, sigma i sigma j x i j square is equal to 4953. Another very interesting notation is t dot dot. What is t dot dot? When I was told that dot we have to do it, तरफ से हम सम कर रहे होते हैं तो इसका मतलब यह हुआ कि अब हमने डॉट डॉट i की जगह पे भी डॉट j की जगह पे भी डॉट डाल दिया तो इसका मतलब है दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द टोटल ऑफ ऑल द ऑब्जर्वेशंस पहले आप सम कर लें ओवर द रोस उसके बाद आप सम कर लें ओवर द कॉलम्स व्हाट डू यू ऑब्टेन t डॉट डॉट एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन the sum of all the observations that is t dot dot is equal to 237. All right, now that we have all the required quantities, we are in a position to compute the various sums of squares that we need in order to fill out our ANOVA table. 
as you can see the correction factor is equal to t dot dot square over n and that is 237 whole square over 12 and that is 4680.75. Now the total sum of squares is given by sigma sigma xij square minus the correction factor. So substituting the values we obtain 272.25. Also the sum of squares for treatments that is SST is given by sigma j t dot j square this whole expression divided by r minus the correction factor. And since r the number of rows is 4 therefore substituting 4 in place of r and 18941 in place of sigma t dot j square and 4680.75 in place of the correction factor. The sum of squares for treatments comes out to be 54.50. As stated earlier, the sum of squares for error is equal to the sum of squares for total minus the sum of squares for treatments and that is equal to 217.75. Substituting all these values in the ANOVA table, we obtain as you now see on the slide, the degrees of freedom for treatments 3 minus 1 that is 2 and the sums of squares as we just found 54.50. Similarly, the degrees of freedom for the total 12 minus 1 that is 11 and the total sum of squares as we just obtained 272.25. 11 minus 2 gives us 9 degrees of freedom for error and 272.25 minus 54.50 gives us 217.75 as the error sum of squares. As explained earlier, the mean square for treatments is given by the sum of squares for treatments divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom. So, 54.50 divided by 2 is equal to 27.25. Similarly, the error mean square is found by dividing 217.75 by the corresponding degrees of freedom which are 9 and so the mean square error is equal to 24.19. Students, we have filled out the ANOVA table almost completely. Lekin ye tamam tar steps humne kis liye kiye hain? So that we are able to compute F our test statistic. And as you once again see on the screen, the computed value of F is to be inserted in the fifth and last column of the ANOVA table. And according to the formula that was presented earlier, it is equal to the mean square for treatments over the mean square error. Therefore, dividing 27.25 by 24.19, the computed value of f comes out to be 1.13. Students, the fifth step of the hypothesis testing procedure is the determination of the critical region and it can be shown that in this kind of a situation analysis of variance pertaining to the completely randomized design which is also called one way analysis of variance. As you see on the screen the critical region will be given by f greater than or equal to f alpha k minus 1 comma n minus k degrees of freedom. Hence, in this particular example, since our level of significance alpha is 0 0.05, k minus 1 is equal to 2 and n minus k is equal to 9. Therefore, consulting the F table for 5 percent right tail area, we obtain 4.26 as our critical value. Now, since our value is 1.13, 1 
Therefore, it does not fall in the critical region and hence we accept our null hypothesis and we may conclude that on the average there is no difference among the yielding capabilities of the three varieties of potato. Students, this is the procedure of analysis of variance with respect to the completely randomized design. Aapne dekha ke computation wala jo step hai na, that is elaborate. Lekin otherwise the main system is just the same. Now in this course, we cannot afford to go into too many rigorous and very very advanced mathematical details. But I would like to give you two or three very very important points which are the basic assumptions of any hypothesis testing procedure. Students, ye jo humne uh, test conduct kiya is me, the first assumption is that the populations whose means we are wanting to compare, they are normally distributed. Number two, the standard deviations of these populations are equal and this assumption is called homocedasticity. And the third point equally important that we assume that the samples that have been drawn from these populations they are random and these samples have been drawn independently. Agar aap uh, confident ho ke jis phenomenon ya jis variable ke saath aap deal kar rahe hain usme aap ki ye assumptions uh, reasonable had tak puri ho rahi hain then you can uh, apply this procedure and as you might have noticed it is an effective procedure for comparing more than two more than two population means. All right, let us now begin the discussion of the other design that I mentioned, the randomized complete block design, which is also called the RCB design. Students, as you now see on the slide, a randomized complete block design is one in which number one, the experimental material is divided into groups or blocks in such a manner that the experimental units within a particular block are relatively homogeneous whereas the overall experimental material is not homogeneous. Number two, each block contains a complete set of treatments that is it constitutes one replication of treatments. And number three, the treatments are allocated at random to the experimental units within each block, which means that the randomization is restricted. A new randomization is made for every block. The object of this type of arrangement is to bring the variability of the overall experimental material under control. Students, ye jo points maine aapke saamne ek formal tarikhe se present kiye, aayye inko zara asaan lafzo mein samajhne ki koshish karte hain. Agar aap uh, us uh, purani baat pe chale jayein ke hum aloo ya kisi bhi aur fasal ki mukhtalif varieties ko bona chahte hain aur compare karna chahte hain unki mean yields ko, is waqt aap yun samjhe ke wo bara farms jo hai na, they are not homogeneous. Um, ho sakta hai ke wo farms jo neher ke nazdik hon, unka fertility level ya water level ya uh, mukhtalif jo cheeze hain agriculture ke hawale se, wo kuch mukhtalif hon compared with those farms which are away from the uh, canal and the ones which are further away, maybe they are even more different. So, the overall experimental material is not homogeneous the way it was in the case of the completely randomized design. Randomized, completely randomized tum lagate hi tab hai na, when we are confident that the entire material is homogeneous. Yaha pe chunke nahi hai, to hum kya karte hai? We divide our material into groups or blocks. Technically, they are called blocks. And within a block, we expect 
that the material is relatively homogeneous. Yani hum uski division hi is tarah karenge ke jo uske andar ek block ke andar hai that is of one type aur jo dusre block ke andar hai that is of another type and so on. So students is situation mein the analysis of variance is called two way ANOVA and the procedures are quite similar to what we did in one way ANOVA but the only thing is that it is a kind of an, uh, a further extension of the basic concepts that you did in the previous case. Let us uh, begin the discussion of this situation with the help of the example that you now see on the screen. In a feeding experiment of some animals, four types of rations were given to the animals that had been divided into five groups of four each. The following results were obtained. What you have in front of you now students is a bivariate table. In the top row you have the four types of rations that were given to these animals and in the first column students you have the five groups into which these animals have been divided. These groups are what we will be technically calling blocks. The values in the body of the table represent the gains in weights of the animals on which these rations were administered. We are required to perform an analysis of variance in order to test the null hypothesis mu a is equal to mu b is equal to mu c is equal to mu d against the alternative that not all the means are equal. Students in the next lecture we will be discussing this problem in detail and we will perform the procedure which will enable us to test this hypothesis. In the meantime I would like to encourage you to attempt quite a few questions pertaining to the simplest case one way analysis of variance that is valid in the case of the completely randomized design. Best of luck and until next time, Allah Hafiz.